Roberts. I'm an economics professor at Arizona State University. And we've had two previous videos about externalities and way to solve the problem of externalities, their market failure. The first method was to tax or subsidize. Uh, the second method was where the government sets a standard and says, you know, you must meet this standard, you cannot pollute more than this. This third method is coming into favor these days. Um, it's an effort to create a market for tradable permits in pollution. So again, the government would set a standard. They would say, okay, this much pollution is how much is allowed. Um, but they wouldn't force every firm to meet the same standard. They would say, um, we're going to either sell or trade permits. Now, so let me sort of explain what I have here. I have a chart. I have five different firms, firm A, B, C, D, and E, and they all pollute. They all pollute the same kind of crud, sulfur dioxide, I don't know, some kind of crud. And every day, each of these firms throws five units of crud into the environment. So firm A throws one, two, three, four, five, five units of crud at the end of every day. Firm B, five units, C, D, and E, five units. So at the end of the day, every day, we have 25 units of crud in the market. And the government says 25 units of crud is too much. The environment cannot handle 25 units of crud. What we are going to do is we are going to set a standard and you are only allowed, we are only going to allow 15 units of crud in the environment every day. So we have to get rid of 10 units of crud. Well, there are all kinds of ways you could get rid of 10 units of crud. One thing we could do is say, because we're into justice and fairness, we could say everybody has to cut back on two units. So instead of firm A throwing five units of crud into the market, they're only allowed to throw three units, so they're going to have to spend money getting rid of this crud. And same for firm B. So everybody is going to be allowed, this would be the set standard method, everybody is allowed to throw three units of crud a day, and so that means they're going to have to spend money cleaning up two units. Now, these numbers are all different, but they indicate the cost of cleaning up this crud. Now, what you will notice is, and you'll notice this for every firm, is that to clean up the first unit of crud is less costly than to clean up the second unit, to, and more, less costly than the third and the fourth and the fifth. And if you think about this, this makes sense. To eliminate the very last trace of pollution is going to be very expensive. And so it's cheaper to clean up the first unit, you can just buy a bottle of bleach and throw it in and you know it'll clean it up. Um, the second unit's going to be a little more expensive. So uh, th that's the case for each of them. Now what you'll notice also is that they have different cleanup costs. And that's because they're different production processes. These are five firms who all throw sulfur dioxide into the air, but they're different kinds of firms. One could be a laundry, you know, those fumes. Another one could be a paper mill. Another one could be a, we don't know what these firms are, but they have different costs of eliminating this sulfur dioxide. And so if we force a set standard on everybody, we say, okay, firm A, you cannot throw five units. You can only throw three. So firm A is going to have to clean up two units of crud. And so what's it going to cost firm A to clean up two units of crud? It's going to, so I'm going to, this is the set standard method, set standard. Firm A, it's going to cost them $300. They're going to clean up this unit, and they're going to clean up this unit, and they're going to throw three units of crud. Firm B is going to clean up two units, and it's 580, 686, 60. Is that right? Yes. I should probably put my glasses on. Um, firm C is going to spend 350. Firm D is going to spend 440. And firm E is going to spend $5,000.
And the total cost to meet the set standard is $6,750. And, and by doing these cleanup processes, we have met the EPA's recommendation, which is only 15 units of crud a day. So each firm is now throwing three units of crud, and it cost them $6,750 to do that. Well, economists say there's a better way. Let's create a market. Let's create a market for the right to pollute, because these firms have been told you have a right to pollute, you have a right to pollute three units. So instead of telling them how, um, you know, how much they have to reduce their pollution, let's just sell 15 permits. 15 permits. In other words, if you have one permit, you can throw one unit of crud. If you have five permits, you can throw five units of crud. You don't have to clean up anything. And so I can use this data and construct a demand curve and come up with a price. I mean, the supply is 15 permits, right? So I mean, if we want to draw a supply and demand curve for this, this is permits, pollution permits. There's 15 of them, right? And there's clearly a demand for these. These people would like to have these permits. And so here's the price. And in fact, I've constructed a demand curve, a rough one. And the price is $395. You can buy a permit for $395. If you don't have a permit, you have to clean up. So using the permit method, To reach the same standard, 15 units of crud, let's see how many permits each com company will buy, and let's see um, how much it will cost. And so, for example, firm A, will they clean this unit up, or will they spend $395 and not have to clean it up? Well, they'll clean it up because it's cheaper. How about this unit? clean up, right? Because that's cheaper. They're not going to spend $3.95 when it only costs them $200 to clean it up. This unit. They're going to buy a permit. Buy, buy, buy. So firm A is going to buy three permits, right? What about firm B? Clean up. Buy, 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 right? Firm B is going to buy four permits because Spending $3.95 and not having to clean this up is better than spending $5.80 and cleaning it up. How about firm C? Clean up, clean up, clean up, clean up, clean up. No permits. How about firm D? Clean up, clean up, buy, 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 right? Three. How about firm E? Five, right? Have we sold 15 permits? Five, eight, fifteen. So we've sold our fifteen permits. Okay, now let's see what it's going to cost the cleanup cost. So these are going to have to put scrubbers or buy effluent treatment or something. Okay, Firm A has three permits. So that means it can only throw two units of crud, right? So Firm A. Um, is going to clean up this one and this one and then go ahead and throw those, right? And so in fact, for firm A, it's still a $300 cost in cleanup, right? Cleanup costs. For firm B, the cleanup costs are only going to be $80, right? Because they have four permits, so they only have to clean up one unit. Firm C has no permits. So firm C is going to have to clean up all of these, $1,250, adding all of those together. Firm D has three permits, so that means he has to clean up two. His cleanup cost is $440. Firm E doesn't have to clean up anything, so his cleanup costs are zero. Again, remember, we're only polluting 15 units, just like we were here, and the cost now is $2,000 and 
Okay, the first question you're probably wondering is, well, you didn't include this $395 cost when you said, well, this is what it costs them to clean up because they had to buy these two permits. But buying these permits, is you can think of it as just a, a, a wealth transfer. It's not using real resources. If we buy bleach or some kind of effluent treatment or actually put a scrubber on a smokestack, that's using real resources. Giving the government $395 isn't using real resources. It's just money transferring hands within the economy. If that troubles you, we'll do it differently. How about this? Uh, we have 15 permits. If you're into justice and fairness, let's give every firm three permits. They don't have to buy them. We're going to give them to you. Firm A has three, B, C, D. Everybody has three permits. What's going to happen? They're going to buy and sell, aren't they? Uh, firm E, for example, may only have three permits, but Firm E would like two more, so I bet Firm E could make some kind of a deal with Firm C to buy permits. You see, what this permit method does is it allows the firms who have very low cleanup costs to do the cleaning up. A, a, a unit of sulfur dioxide thrown by firm A is no more damaging to the environment than a unit of sulfur dioxide thrown by firm E. And therefore, if firm A could clean it up for $100 and it cost firm E $2,000 to clean it up, it doesn't make any sense to make him clean it up when you could end up with the same result by this guy cleaning it up. And so that's what creating a market in tradable permits gives you. It gives you this ability, and you have to allow for these to be uh, traded or sold. Um, it gives you the ability to reach your goal, our goal is 15 units of crud, at a much lower cost. So um, this method is getting a lot of favor uh, in the EPA, they're starting to look at this um, because, and of course economists love it because what you've done is you've created a market, the supply and demand for permits to pollute. So this is a much more efficient way, spending $2,000 to clean up pollution instead of spending $6,700 for the exact same result. So that's our lesson in tradable permits.